There's two keys to success in the broker business. You jerk off? Do I, do I jerk off? Yeah. How many times a week? Like, um, three, three, four, three or four times, maybe. I gotta pump those numbers up. Those are rookie numbers in this racket. I want to. That's not why I do it. Mm -hmm. I do it because I fucking need to. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. It kind of can wake some people out. Mm -hmm. Right. Done. This is not a tip. This is a prescription. Trust me. Mm -hmm. Second key to success. Yo, CrossFit is dead. It's dead. A Andrew, you're a hater. All right, well, how about it's dying? It's been dying. It's one of those, how long can you survive without water in the desert? I don't know. How long can you survive without water in general? Let's just say that it's seven days, because I don't know. Right now, it appears as if we're on day three, maybe day four. There's time in which we're gonna be able to milk this thing and survive, but at some point if we don't get any water, we're out. Water is important for every source of life on the planet from what I know from my freaking undergraduate level of education. You need water to survive. I'm a YouTuber. Sevan is a YouTuber. We got another YouTuber in this space and his name is Nate Edwardson. Nate Edwardson runs a CrossFit YouTube channel. It gets anywhere from the minimum 5,000 views upwards of about 20 to 30,000 views on average. He has a formula that he follows. It's a three to five minute video. He sees things in the space. He puts up a picture on his YouTube with a face looking at whatever the situation was. He presents the situation to you within the first minute to minute and a half. There's this Okay, something a little thing in the intro where it gets you into it. After he presents you with the situation, he gives you a little bit more information on it. He gives a slight opinion and he's gone. By the time he's gone, you've watched just about the whole video. When YouTube sees that you've watched a good portion of the video, they're gonna give that video to other people who watch those sorts of videos. There is Nate Edwardson in a box. Right now, there's nothing to talk about in the CrossFit space. He admitted it right there. And that's cool. Nate Edwardson doesn't make Natty or not. Nate Edwardson and doesn't make things out of whatever the hell he wants. Remember yesterday I said, that's what I do. You bet your ass I'll do that. He also said he's going to go and make another YouTube channel. That thing is called Nate Edwardson Golf. His CrossFit channel has been around since 2010. It's got about 22 or 23,000 subscribers on it. Nate Edwardson Golf has been around for two years, January of 2021. However, he's only had videos up for the past two weeks. Click onto any one of these videos or even just look at his page and you can see that he's beginning and even is using the exact same formula that he has used in the CrossFit space. He introduces some sort of a topic. Went on Matt Fisher's podcast January third has been a date that has been burned in all of our brains and i'm here to talk about it today because it is coming up quickly and there are lots of things i want to discuss he introduces that topic he gives you a little bit more background on what's going on he gives his opinion and he's out and then youtube realizes that by the time people have watched the whole video they're gonna pump it to other people who show interest in the topic at hand he's only been making videos on this channel for two freaking weeks his first video 56 thousand views. It's three minutes long. It's almost like I told you exactly what happened there. The title is why Grant is leaving good good. Doesn't make sense. Okay, um, well, look at this. He's looking at him. This is this guy named Grant. I'm going to click on it. Here's the whole intro. Here's who Grant is. I gave my opinion and here's the next video because Oh, it was three minutes long, I'll watch the next one. Nate Edwardson in a box. The big difference is that one gets 56,000 views and it's his first video. In CrossFit, he's got a couple of those. If you put Mal O'Brien, Daniel Brandon, or any of them on the thumbnail, people are gonna click on it, especially if he's looking at them with a catchy title. People call it clickbait. My videos get long as shit. His videos are short. You watch 90% of it, YouTube's like, holy hell, this is amazing. Is it amazing? I don't think so. A lot of people in CrossFit don't think so. Some people think so. Cool, keep watching. There are not as many people in CrossFit watching videos as there are in golf. And that is what I'm trying to address right here. This isn't a shit on Nate Edwardson fest. Is that what you think? You think? Some people are going to hear it that way. This is an observation of what he has done and what is happening in the sport that we hold near and dear, 
that is CrossFit. He's talking about this guy named Grant in his first video. He's talking about Good Good. He's talking about Rick Shields. He's talking about golf. Live the Masters. Golf, 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 golf. He's talking about golf. Same exact formula with much more water. I brought up water in the beginning. Remember CrossFit, we're on day three or day four. We're gonna make it to day seven and then we're out. We're dead. All of us are dead. Over in golf world, you got one of those ice mountain things that's just never ending and it's like, wow, is this thing ever gonna run out of water? And how do you say that? Let's go to the channels that he's talking about. We go over to the Good Good channel, which believe it or not, I'm a golfer to some degree, so I've looked into the Rick Shields channel and I've looked into the Good Good channel. They're quirky, they're informative, and they're informative as to what's going on in the space. And apparently there's even a little bit of drama. Enter Nate Edwardson. He looks at those channels in which there's three of them. The Good Good people have a two or three videos a week. Not one of them has less than 500,000 and they approach two million views per video. Two to three videos a week at three million views a pop. Rick Shields is the same way. Two or three videos a week. He has a long form and a short form. His long form stuff gets 100 to 200,000 views a video. His short form stuff gets upwards of two million views a freaking video. Not one of them has less than two or 300,000. And this is important because that is the waterfall at the top of what Nate Edwardson is doing right now is Rick Shields and Good Good. It's like pouring down water into Nate Edwardson's three minute coverage channel. It's cool to see at the very minimum. We're cruising over to the CrossFit Games Waterfall channel. This is what provides nourishment to myself and to Sevan and to every other little YouTube platform on the planet. They put up a video yesterday with Haley Adams and it's titled Building Strength and Moving Better in 2023. I believe that that is actually their best YouTube video in a long time fucking time. Other than that, all they do is regurgitate stuff from the days in which the content was actually good or they cover their own stuff and you might as well be Nate Edwardson at that point. But the thing that about Nate Edwardson is he can only talk about stuff that is happening as it's happening. So CrossFit has these videos. Here we go. Even one from 16.4, Sigmund's daughter versus David's daughter. Come on. Good, good and Rick Shields are making their own stuff up every day. Get a little creative. Don't you have the hundreds of thousands of millions of dollars to figure things out like this? Then you've got the Masters athletes from the Legends Championship. You're covering an event. Sean Ramirez versus Nick Tell. Do you know in 16.3? No wonder that you're getting 3.7 thousand views per video. You plug in Mal O'Brien, boom, 38,000. It's like, oh, I didn't know I was on freaking Nate Edwardson's 800,000 subscriber channel called the CrossFit Games. I'm going to put a picture of Mal O'Brien and that's what's going to be fueling my viewership. Are you out of your mind? They regurgitate all these old open workouts. They regurgitate the CrossFit Games events. They repackage them and hope that you're going to watch them and everyone's going to be frustrated. And when people are frustrated, they stop clicking in the first place. It's like when you watch a Nate Edwardson video, I, you're like, what, 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 what? I could have read that on the internet on the morning chocolate article or like, it is spoken. It has told us the way. You didn't tell me anything. You just didn't say anything. It didn't say anything. And I watched three minutes of nothing. Then they stopped clicking eventually. And so far, Andrew, all you've done is point out the obvious and bitch, but now it's time for me to tell you exactly the way that CrossFit fixes all of this stuff. It's YouTube 101. You look at the best videos that you've ever put up and you do more of that. And then you also go to the comment sections in those videos and the analytics side, it'll show you little spikes. It's like, what kept people here? What did they like? To which I bring up a video from nine years ago. It's Josh Bridges on the 2020 game chipper event. It's got 2.3 million views. Like, okay, what's this all about? He's literally doing a workout from what Rich Froning does. It's building anticipation for the 2013 games. It's like, could this be the guy to beat him? It's all stuff where you're speculating, you're creating a story, you're not regurgitating shit, you're creating your own new stuff. The first comment on there is from a guy named Leonardo. This video made me start training CrossFit thanks to Josh. Comment right underneath that says, me too. Scroll down a little bit, you'll find another comment that says, this video made me join CrossFit in 2015 and I am still doing it. Note, this is from nine years ago, 2012. This comment was made three years ago. It's still doing CrossFit because of a 2.3 million view from nine freaking years ago. You see that and CrossFit should go, okay, what can we do leading up to this games? Who's gonna be who? And I guess they tried to do that with the Reykjavik team, but whoever thought that that was a good idea is out of their fucking mind. Like no one was going to beat CrossFit Mayhem. This is why you need smarter people over there helping you. That's why Dave Castro posted about Ricky Garrard coming back. Get Ricky Garrard, the former steroid user, firm steroid user, come back and beat Maderos. That would have been such a 
fucking hit of a YouTube series. Like, you know, Ricky Gerard following him up to the CrossFit Games, and then the whole time he's pushing him, and he's actually in the lead a little bit. Could you have imagined? Too late. <laughs> Grab one more comment from that video, which is in Portuguese, so I translated it. I will never forget this video when I went to take a CrossFit course. They put it on while we were waiting for class to start, and we were all sitting there and drooling. Meaning, it's burned into this guy's head, and it's never going to leave. It's like, hey, what's your favorite YouTube video from CrossFit? It's like, oh, Josh Bridge is doing the 2012 chipper. Like, Andrew, what's your favorite CrossFit video? It's like, well, how do you beat Rich if you're going to have to make him bleed? I think if you're going to beat Rich, you're going to have to bleed to do it. Graham Holmberg and Marcus Hendren, Jason Kalipa. He's in the garage squatting 225 for reps. We just got done having a dinner with our wives. I hear the garage open. I'm like, what's happening in there? It's him front squatting a couple hundred pounds multiple times. I'm just looking, I'm like, really? If you know, you know. If you don't, that video has like three something million views. But I got another one for you. One that they just pulled and they created and they do it similar today, but there's a big difference here. It's Dan Bailey worked out of the day February 8th, 2016. Six years ago, five million views. It's just a workout of the day video. But you read the first comment saying that the voiceover of the athlete performing the workout is a great idea and is very informative. Please always do this. How can you not look at that and understand how beneficial official it is. It's the workout of the day from CrossFit.com with a comment right there, 690 views. Alfredo Ruiz, more like these, please, these inspire people to, for me to do exercise. Dan, you are the best. The next comment, this is one of the first CrossFit workouts I've ever seen to this day, and this is four years later, and it's still the best to me. It makes me want to rip my freaking hair out when it's this obvious that they have the answers to the problem and they just won't listen. Everything I said about the Bailey video is still true. That is on the CrossFit Games page. But Andrew, there's another CrossFit page. It's got 1.7 million followers. There's two of them, right? For some reason, this one never pops up when I type in CrossFit, and I have a hard time finding it, but I understand why. I went through the past one year of CrossFit's 1.7 million follower channel, and there are no more than five videos with more than 15,000 views. And you say that like, oh, there's probably a bunch that are 10 to 15, uh-uh. I would say that 80 to 85% of the videos that they put up in there are under 4,000 views. I cannot say the same about my YouTube channel, which does not have 1.7 million subscribers. What this channel does a lot of is workout of the day videos. What they do is they chop it up and they don't know people that you can relate to. They don't have people that you know. In the example that I brought up with Dan Bailey that had 5 million views, we know a lot about him. There's a story behind him. People have seen him at the CrossFit Games. When he's going through a 15 minute workout video, which he is in that 5 million view video, people are invested and they're taking things away from it and they're inspired. And while it's extremely valuable that CrossFit does put up a video every day. People don't find it relatable. They don't stick through the majority of the video. And by the looks of it, it's no longer even getting to people like me who spend just about every waking second of their YouTube time doing CrossFit crap to the point where I didn't even freaking have it pop up. I had to go back and I'm now re-recording this. If you sort it from top to bottom, most popular to least popular, there's a bunch of 1 million plus view videos and a lot that are even in like the 5 to 10 million view realm. However, there aren't a single one of those that have happened in the past three years. What's the parallel between three years ago and any of the one million view videos on the CrossFit main YouTube channel? Firing the media team? Getting rid of Sevan? This isn't a huge pitch for him, by the way. While maybe that's exactly what you should do, that's not what I'm trying to do. All I'm saying is it's not idiotic to think that when something like that happens and you can see through numbers a change as drastic as that one and you can filter through your past one year's worth of videos and the only video that is doing well is the one that is most similar to the Dan Bailey video. It's a James Hobart doing double rep DT, the whole thing, he's talking through it. It's not chopped up the way that you've got it in a two minute segment with people that we can't relate to and don't know. And while there's value to it, it's not what's gonna drive you guys. I don't know where I left off on the other video, but back to what I was talking about anyway. It's because they don't care, right? It's because they want you to die in the desert. They don't want the water to filter down to the rest of the crowd. And I'll get more on that in a minute, but before I get there, Men's Murph 2000 
2015 Reebok CrossFit Games. It's got the most views on the YouTube channel, 12 million. Legend has it six years later and the fans are still waiting for 100 pull-ups. It's been six years and I'm still waiting for a pull-up is the next comment. The next one, as a former triathlete, it feels a lot longer to watch people run a mile than when you do it yourself. That first mile felt like a 10K run. First three comments, 4.6 thousand likes, 2.1 thousand likes, 305 likes. That's more likes than views on their most recent videos. And why is all of this important? They're just talking shit. Who the fuck cares? You're only gonna get so many people to funnel into one video that you're going to like. You might as well also funnel in people that are going to hate. Then they can talk, they're talking, they're talking, they're fighting, they're defending you. Those people over there, the triathletes and the pull-ups are never gonna happen people, they're never gonna join anyway. But it's good to have them here because otherwise they're just not here. And then you're not giving your people anything to talk about in your comments section. And then you're not getting a video with 12 million views. While they're in the comments section battling it out, the video is playing above. You're getting that watch time. When you're getting that watch time, it's going to get pumped to more people who have any interest in anything fitness. Because those people clearly don't do CrossFit. But what they do is maybe bodybuilding, powerlifting. Who knows what they're doing? But clearly it's not CrossFit. But if they're watching it and YouTube knows who they are and they're just sitting there talking, commenting, they're going to go, okay, there's other people people like this, they're in there. Why are they in there? Oh, we're going to send this to this person and to this person. Oh, and we're going to send it to these three people over here because they all share a similar interest. They're watching this thing. 12 million views. Boom. And I told you more about the YouTube and the water. And you talk about channels like Talking Leaf Finish, which have 30,000 freaking subscribers on their station. And then every one of their videos is freaking 100, 200, 300. Maybe if they get a big name on there, it'll catch a couple of thousand of views. But a channel like that with people like those, they shouldn't get anything less than 5,000 views per video. I talked about the Rick Shields golf show. We've got the Sevon podcast. Every single one of those shows get two to five and then on good ones they're getting 10 to 15 thousand views that's a long form thing if crossfit was killing it the way that they should could and have to for everyone to survive stations like sevens will get upwards of a hundred thousand views that's the best coverage in the space when it comes to long form content stations like nate edwardson's would probably be getting 150 thousand views a video and i don't even know what it would mean for ones like mine it's not about ones like mine i don't give a shit about ones like mine this is the first video I've made a long time where I would only want one person to watch it and that one person would be somebody over at CrossFit to say, oh, duh. Like, why aren't we doing this? It's like, yeah, let's make more Dan Bailey videos like this. It's like, no, not Dan Bailey, but workout of the day featuring CrossFit Games level athlete voicing over what they were going through at that moment in time. And it's all about the affiliates. It's all about the affiliates. In the world of football, basketball, baseball, it's unique. Like most people who watch that stuff aren't going to go out and play the sport, but they are going to have their kids do it. And then they're going to invest all of their time, money, and life into the sport throughout their younger years. It's what's going to drive their kids. And there is an avenue with that in CrossFit. But the thing about CrossFit is that anybody who ends up watching it could also end up doing it at an affiliate. It could be the thing that saves their lives. And that's what this is all about. A solution so elegant that it may be optimal, right? It's simple, but that does not mean that it is easy. The only question that I would have for CrossFit is how do you expect to get more people to the solution if all you're going to do is regurgitate things that people who have no idea what CrossFit are have no connection to and don't explain to you what it is. The Haley Adams thing, 100,000 views. Maybe there's 100,000 people left watching CrossFit stuff. You can see on Craig Ritchie's channel, he's got 340,000 subscribers, most of which he picked up when people like Arm and Hammer were also kicking it. Very similar channel to mine. My channel is what happens when you open it up in a time in which it's dying. I'm really trying not to be a cocky piece of shit when I say this sort of thing, but I put out a video a day and there's a good chance that people just don't want to subscribe to me because of some of the stuff that I say or have said. Like, yeah, you think so? Uh-huh. Maybe they really like Tia Toomey and they won't subscribe to my channel out of spite. It doesn't matter! And that's cool. And the same thing might happen with Sevan, who's got about 20,000 subscribers as well. But day after day after day, we are getting the most viewership on average when compared to some of the other stations in the space. And it's cool, but it's not good because the viewership needs to be higher. I pump those numbers up. Those are rookie numbers in this racket. Because when our viewership is higher and we're getting more water from the top of the freaking water fountain that is CrossFit. You got to feed the geese to keep the blood flowing. That means that there's more interaction down at the level of the affiliate. And when you get really good at it, you'll fucking be stroking it and you'll be thinking about money. 
More people are sitting there who are interested in stuff like ours, stuff like Edwardson's, stuff like Craig Ritchie, stuff like Talking Elite Fitness, Coffee Pods and Wads. Make Wads great again. It's kettlebells and cocktails. And every single one of those gets a 10% bump. That's 10% coming from people at the affiliates. We don't have CBS or NBC or ESPN playing our crap. All we've got is YouTube. If you look at YouTube and it's dead, that means CrossFit's dead. And we got three years left for them to figure it out. And there was a point in time where I was like, guys, make me the head judge. Make me the head judge. It's what's the most important. I don't think that that's what's the most important anymore. It's incredibly important. But what's the point of having a head judge if there's nothing to judge? And I'm not talking about the CrossFit games anymore. I'm talking about CrossFit Inc. The methodology, the company, everything everyone holds so near and dear, I can help. I would hope that there isn't such a high level of arrogance that if someone were to watch this, they'd look at this and say, fuck that guy, he doesn't know what he's talking about. And at the very minimum, if you're not gonna like try to ask me to help you out, which I really think you should, I hope that you look at this stuff. And it's one of those issues where I put out something and... This entire video is great because it brings me back to when CrossFitters would go back and forth with other communities and industries, training modalities, and they would learn from one another. And at the very minimum, everybody had some fun shit to watch. I say like, I wish that the CrossFit space would do more collaborations with other fitness modalities like Brent Fikowski and Steffi Cohen did. And then over here you see, oh, the Buttery Bros are doing stuff with people who aren't in CrossFit, and Noah Olson brought in a bunch of his bodybuilding and gymnastics friends. They know what's up, and we don't believe in coincidences. CrossFit, I got an email address, and I know you've got it. And Riller, out.